I welcome everybody on board. And I'm sure you're finding the sessions interesting and useful, and you're learning something new, something exciting, something meaningful, which you are going to uh, carry in your professional lives as well. So how was uh, um, the learning experience? Uh, please uh, let me uh, make it clear to all of you that this is going to be uh, uh, highly interactive uh, in terms of our discussions. And uh, I'll be talking about the first module briefly, and thereafter we will enter into our discussion. And uh, uh, we'll also invite uh, um, experience sharing by the learners on board. Uh, so how was uh, the learning experience? Uh, would you like to come forward and uh, share your learning experience? Well, you can do that uh, uh, after I have uh, spoken about the first module uh, briefly. So please allow me to speak about the first module briefly. Uh, you all know uh, we started the first module on uh, a note of the power of communication. Uh, we all know communication is important, communication is powerful, and communication is one such skill that can help us grow and flow. We make bondings, lifelong uh, relationships with the help of communication. We succeed in life with the help of communication. So communication does a whole lot of things for each one of us. And that's the reason why uh, to be good at communication is important. When I say communication, I do not want to restrict it to any particular language. Irrespective of the language that we all communicate in, it's important that we understand the processes involved in the communication activities. Therefore, communication is something that we all need to understand and experience. And we also need to make others experience it through our communicative activities. If you can recall, I talk about the power of communication in the first module. While talking about the power of communication, I said communication helps us express our sense. We all are expressive by nature. There is probably any human being who is not expressive. The only difference is that we uh, may not express ourselves verbally or vocally. We may express ourselves in some other way. For example, uh, somebody may not be very comfortable while talking to others. Somebody may be very, very hesitant, very shy, and very um, a, a kind of introvert while communicating with others. But the same person also expresses his or her feelings and experiences. How? Sometimes people take to journal writing, diary writing. Uh, they, they can record themselves and listen to their own uh, experiences privately, or they can share the experiences with just a few uh, friends of theirs. But either ways, communication happens and we express ourselves. When it comes to expressing ourselves publicly, we find multiple channels through which we do so. We reach out to people, we try to understand them, we interact with them, and that's how we express ourselves. So there is probably no human being who doesn't express. So communication is one thing that helps us express our sense to others. At the same time, communication also engages our sense. We can engage people. Just imagine when you begin to communicate in a friendly and inclusive manner, you can easily engage people. If some of you are uh, faculty members, uh, instructors, the moment you uh, begin to engage your learners, they will feel special, they will feel important, 
and they will be a part of that communication process readily. At the same time, communication is powerful because it helps people come together. It brings people together. One example of bad communication, people go away from us. One example of good communication, people come closer to us. So we can establish that togetherness through communication because we can easily bring people together with the power of communication. And that's the reason why at the very beginning of this module, I said communication is very, very powerful. And in order to be good at communication, we need to understand the power of communication. And thereafter, uh, I, I went on to say that communication builds connection. One word, one line, one gesture, the connection is established. You are at the airport, you are at the railway station, the bus station. You are looking at a stranger, just smile, and that smile can establish communication. You are on a flight, you just look at the person sitting next to you, smile, and that will begin communication between the two of you. And who knows, you may turn out to be the best of friends in time to come. So communication establishes connection and connection is very, very important because we humans want and love to remain connected. So communication helps us not only establish that connection, but also sustain that connection for a long, long time. Collaboration is something that I also talked about in this module. Communication helps us collaborate. Just imagine, we are currently living in the era of collaboration or in the era of teamwork. This is the era of teamwork. So we don't see individual leaders now, we see team leaders. So every member of a team is a leader. So how can we build that team if we do not know how to communicate to establish collaboration or to start collaboration. So if we can communicate our ideas, our thoughts, our experiences, our beliefs, our values, then we can establish collaboration with others. Then communication leads to productivity. If I tell you this is the thing that we need to do, then you'll also feel like, yes, I'll also contribute. If I tell you this is a thing that you need to do, you'll feel as if I'm trying to be the boss and command you to do something. So you'll feel offended and you'll not contribute, you'll be discouraged. Unless you have a, a materialistic motivation for doing that. Otherwise, if I can communicate my thoughts to my colleagues, my team members well, it will lead to higher productivity. And then communication leads to well-being. Imagine you're saying something to one of your friends and that friend is unable to understand. You tell that once, twice, thrice, four times. By that time, you'll feel frustrated and angry. The moment you're frustrated, disturbed and angry, it will affect your overall well-being. So it will lead to the, the release of uh, negative hormones in us, disturbing hormones in us, like cortisol. The moment cortisol is released, we'll feel very, very disturbed, frustrated, anxious, and that will affect our well-being. If we can communicate well, our friends can easily understand. If we can respect our friends while communicating with them, they will also return the same thing to us. And that will lead to our well being. So, for those people who know how to communicate well and who have been communicating properly with their colleagues and friends, they are in a much better position in terms of their well being. So, communication also leads to well being. And then communication, we all know um, it helps us resolve 
conflicts. It helps us build empathetic power or empathy. We can easily understand the perspective of others if we can communicate properly or if we know how to communicate properly. Remember, communication is not only about saying things. It is also about understanding the perspective of others. So when I'm not saying anything, I'm also communicating. So listening is also a form of communication. So also speaking. Most people think speaking is a form of communication, which is not a right. It may be right partially, but not entirely. So speaking is not communication. Listening is also a form of communication. When we listen to others, we can understand their perspective. Why my friend is sad today? Why my friend is angry today? If I can understand that while listening to the words of my friend, I'm communicating. Because after listening, I'm going to give my response. There's something called reactions. So reactions is very popular these days on social media. So whenever we are communicating with somebody, we are listening to somebody, we are reading somebody's writings or posts, we use the reaction icons to let them know how we are feeling about it, to let them know that we are listening to them and they will feel special. At least somebody is listening to me. So in the first place, when it comes to establishing connection, it will lead to consciousness transformation. It will help us reach out to others. Otherwise, there will always be a gap, a gulf between us and the other people around us. It will lead to empathy building and it will also lead to the resolution of conflicts. So that's why communication is powerful. And then collaboration, we all know, when we communicate with an open-minded, for example, I'm the team leader, it's not really necessary that I'll say, yes, this is how I think about it. So all team members, you need to do it in the manner I have thought about it. That is bossy, that is commanding. I must include open-mindedness in my communication. That means I must accept the fact that there is somebody else who may think in a better way than I do. And when I get a better idea, I must respect and accept it promptly. When I do so, that means I am showing an open-minded approach and respect for others. Because it will be very, very foolish for any one of us to think that I am the wisest one, all others are fools. Others can also think in the same manner. So nobody will be wise and nobody will be a fool that way. So we need to show respect to others through communication. Recognition and bridging, we have to recognize the abilities of others. That will help us bridge. And how do we recognize the ability of others? The moment I tell my friend, you, you just told me something I, I didn't know about. Thank you for that. That means I'm recognizing the ability of my friend and the bridge is established through that communication. It will also help us in teamwork and leadership. And it will also help us in cooperative problem solving. That means we can come together to solve a problem. So um, a team is always better than just one individual when it comes to problem solving. So that's how communication helps us with collaboration. And then productivity, as I have told you, it will lead to transparency and empowerment. The moment I tell somebody that you're very good at this, that person will feel empowered and that person will feel like doing things for that team. So it will enhance productivity. And then there'll be low friction and misunderstanding. If communication is clear, respectful, there'll be very low friction and misunderstanding because low friction and misunderstanding result in the loss of productivity, poor productivity. So if we can erase low friction of friction and misunderstanding, we can lead to higher levels of 
productivity. And then it will also lead to increased accountability. That means there will be transparency. When there is transparency, there will be greater productivity. And then something that's very, very important, we all are uh, professionals that way, even the students on board or who have attended this course, they all are professionals because they are moving towards some professional assignment in future, the students. So every professional wants to have a healthy work environment. If the work environment is not good, then I'll not feel like going to my office every day. I will find 100 excuses to stay away from my office than one excuse to go to my office. So it's important that we create that healthy work environment through our communication so that people will love to come to office. So, the, and then uh, well being. When it comes to well being, we all know. Through communication, we can establish trust, understanding. Just imagine you're feeling low. Your friend comes to you and tells you, what's the matter? You can share your problem with me. I'm very much there for you. How would you feel? You'll feel special. You'll feel at least there is somebody who is there for you. That will establish trust and understanding. And then you'll feel like belonging to that particular place when somebody tells you, you're important to this team. Just imagine if all your team members tell you that even without you, we are going to manage the team well. You'll feel so low, so neglected. But if your team members tell you that without you, it will be very, very difficult for us to manage the team. The team will be incomplete without any of its members then imagine how each of the members is going to feel about it. That will be leading to a sense of belongingness. And then there will be equity and assurance. It's not that one member is very important to the leader, the other member is less important. The other member is not important at all. No, there has to be equity and assurance that this is your team. You all are equally important. So you all, have equal privilege. And that will give the team its purpose and direction. It will be you know, uh, collaborative purpose and direction. So therefore, communication is very, very important. It's very, very powerful. And we all need to think about these dimensions of communication. Because we know communication uh, will go along with us to work, to our workplaces where we need to establish positive relationships, build trust. We can define expectations, goals, and processes, and we can promote respect through kindness and empathy. And then we can encourage expression of opinion and ideas. You should never hesitate in the workplace to say something against somebody in the team, to differ. We must have that liberty, that privilege to differ. If your boss says something, and then you say, I agree with you, but partially. I differ on these points, or I completely differ with you. And this is what I think about it. If you get that kind of environment, you'll feel special. You'll enjoy well-being. So, the workplace has to ensure such an environment to all its people. And then collaboration, teamwork, and uh, diversity, differences. Most often we think that people should think like us. Why sh should I say that the way I teach, the way I present, the way I behave, my students should also behave in that manner. That means I'm trying to kill diversity, which is a wonderful thing. So diversity is wonderful. That allows us to uh, develop an insight into a variety of things, multiple, a variety of understandings. So diversity is very, very important. We must value diversity through our communication. Differences, we must celebrate our differences. 
it's a privilege that we are different from each other. Otherwise, we'll, we'll sound like parrots and we'll look like uh, a pack of uh, uh, sheep. We'll look like a herd if we do not have the differences. So we must celebrate the differences. We must respect the diversity. And this can happen through communication. And when this happens, this leads to a great amount of success for everybody at a certain workplace. So um, in this module, the most important communication skill that you came across was the listening skills. We all know listening is a very, very important communication skill. Since it's a passive activity, most people tend to ignore it. But I'm sure after taking a look at the module, you must have realized that listening is the most important communication skill. If we become good listeners, half of the communication task is done. Because listening is one such form that can perform multiple tasks. So listening is both speaking and listening simultaneously. So you all know if we do not listen properly, it will lead to uh, you know, uh, a strained relationship. It will lead to the weakening of uh, trust and communication. It will lead to misunderstandings, conflicts, and uh, hurt feelings. And it will lead to ineffective decisions. So listening is very, very important. So you are familiar with those poor listening styles like spacing out, pretend listening. You're showing as if you're listening to somebody, but you're not listening actually. Selective listening, you only take those words that you require and you leave out the other. Self-centered listening, that means you're more focused on yourself than the listener. Word listening, you're just listening to understand the meaning of word, not the entire meaning. So these are some of the poor listening responses and styles that I talked about in this module, which you have come across. There's a very poor listening response that is called judging. Or probing. So these are some of the poor listening styles that I talked about. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, uh, I also talked about active and passive uh, listeners. Uh, I also talked about key listening skills, uh, how to pay attention to your uh, speaker, how to display interest um, while listening to a speaker, how to respond appropriately so that you do not interrupt mm. your listening and how to hold back <laughs> and avoid making <clears throat> assumptions. Uh, somebody's mic is uh, unmuted. Please mute. Thank you. And then uh, how it is important for all of us to provide feedback, either in the form of some gestures or uh, verbal expressions, how to give feedback. It's very important because it tells our speaker that we are listening if we do not give them the feedback and how we show empathy through listening. I also talked about how effective listening is an important skill for life management. Because uh, uh, listening leads to um, collaboration, teamwork, and a variety of uh, other um, benefits at the workplace. And then uh, you came to uh, learn about different types of listening, like informational listening, discriminative listening, and then uh, comprehensive listening, selective listening, uh, sympathetic listening, empathetic listening, uh, critical listening, uh, and reflective listening. So while taking a look at reflective listening, you must have discovered how it is the most important listening activity or listening approach, because that's where you try to understand what the speaker is talking about. And then you verify your understanding with the speaker without either 
disturbing or making the speaker uncomfortable. So you also came to know about uh, those barriers to active listening, uh, barriers like lack of interest, prejudgment, um, partial listening, deep-rooted beliefs, and a variety of other barriers. Um, I also talked about uh, uh, the price of poor listening in one of the video lectures uh, in this module. And you must have uh, discovered how it leads to a loss of credibility, drop in morale, and lack of innovation and various other problems. And then uh, you might have discovered something interesting uh, related to poor speaking styles, because this module also included a segment on speaking apart from listening. So poor speaking styles like musitation, uh, discursive speaking, and then ponderous or boring speaking, flowery, prolix, uh, uh, sesquipedalian speaking, loquacious uh, speaking style. Speaking like uh, listening is also a very, very important activity because we need to understand um, what speaking is all about. It is not just conversation because conversation is a spoken exchange of ideas, observations, opinion, or feeling between people. Speaking goes much beyond conversation. It's, it's much more than conversation because when we try to understand the transactional and interactional functions of conversation, we can discover how important speaking is all about. So uh, when it comes to uh, conversation in action, uh, we understand that we generally speak to inform, persuade, connect, and collaborate. Speaking to inform is the easiest speaking activity. But speaking to persuade is not easy. So you can think of it yourselves. Just think of a situation where you are uh, you know, speaking to somebody to persuade, to convince. It's not that easy. Unless you speak in a manner which sounds to be credible, people are not going to trust you. So we first have to develop that credibility so that people will trust us and they will be convinced by what we are saying. And then connect. We speak to establish connection. We don't speak to uh, scare people away from us. We don't speak to drive people away. Nobody does that. No speaker does. That. No speaker wants that. But without proper understanding or knowledge of the speaking activity, we sometimes end up doing this. And then we also speak to collaborate. And then, you know, now, when it comes to effective speaking or effective conversation, there are a few things that uh, require our attention. For example, starting. How do we start a conversation? There are multiple ways in which we can start a conversation. But starting a conversation doesn't mean that we'll end it immediately. Starting a conversation means that we are going to extend it beyond the starting point. So starting actually can foresee the other important stages in the conversation process. So starting uh, then leads to entering, maintaining a conversation, changing the conversation, and then turn taking and closing the conversation. So these are the different stages in effective communication. Otherwise, I'll ask you something. You'll say, yes, this is the answer. And then we part ways. No conversation happens. It's just an exchange of information. In the absence of conversation, it will be difficult for us to know each other, to understand each other, and to respect each other, and to build that trust and connection with each other. It will be difficult. So therefore, Conversations are very, very important. From starting to closing, we pass through multiple stages. So that's important. And then we know uh, 
the effective speaking styles in one of the video lectures I have talked about it. I said there is a motivator speaking style. There are people who motivate through their speech. And then uh, these are the people who, you know, they have a very strong voice, uh, fast paced, intense, choppy gestures. Um, it's about their energy, the tone of their speech. So they have the motivator speaking style. And there's this commander speaking style. They speak like commanders. And then they, they are very good. Or this speaking style is very good if we are required to deliver a serious message. And then we come to the entertainer. So when we can mix uh, a lot of entertainment elements in our speech, we act like an entertainer. And then facilitator speaking style. So we, we uh, came to know about all these speaking styles. And then uh, that brought us to uh, the language types that we need to avoid while speaking. For example, the exclusionary language. Most often we uh, do not uh, take care of the language that we use while speaking. We think anything will pass. But then uh, we may uh, end up humiliating somebody, embarrassing, uh, frustrating somebody through the language that we use. So we need to take care of language. So it has to be inclusive language. So in the place of a businessman, we can always call it a business person. So in the place of forefathers, we can always use a better term that is ancestors. So in this manner, or sometimes our language can be very, very abusive. Like uh, this, this person is a retarded person. So the word retarded is abusive, derogatory. So we can always say a person with some developmental disability. Similarly, we can um, you know, find a better expression for the word crippled. So in the place of crippled, we can always say a person with disability. And that's the reason why most government papers now include this, this uh, uh, you know, abbreviation PWD. PWD stands for people with disability. Instead of writing um, handicapped or crippled people, so it's a better expression. It is respectful than the other one. So the language that we use needs to be inclusive. And uh, we need to avoid inappropriate language like swearing, cursing, slangs, uh, uh, informal uh, exchanges, we need to avoid and those uh, expressions. And inaccurate word usage is a major problem. You know, uh, sometimes uh, we can use acorns, uh, like uh, uh, in the place of agreement, we can say agreeance. So such expressions need to be checked and cleansed from our speaking. And then there's something very, very important that we all need to take care of. When I say we all, I also include myself. Uh, I also need to take care of it. The I versus you language. So there are people who say that I is important. You is not important. That means I'm important, you're not important. I know everything, you do not know anything. So I'm wise, you're not wise. So this I versus you scenario leads to conflict. We need to avoid this I versus you scenario. In the place of it, we need to create this we scenario. This we scenario is far more inclusive. So our best interest, we will, let's explore this, or let's approach this problem. Let's find a solution to this problem. We can do uh, much better when we come together. So, you know, uh, when you uh, begin to use this we language, that promptly connects people, that brings people together. And when that happens, we can go for a good team. And when we have a good team, it will lead to Productivity, high productivity, and high productivity will give us a sense of achievement, accomplishment, and satisfaction. And that way, we can 
be uh, at ease with ourselves psychologically and that will ensure our well-being. So our well-being comes at the end of it, at the end of the tunnel. When we pass through the tunnel doing a variety of things, we are ensuring our well-being. So that way, I come to this brief, uh, come to the end of this brief uh, uh, talk on module one. I'll now uh, return to uh, you all, and uh, uh, we can now uh, take up various things for discussion. And I would like to hear your comments, your observations, your uh, you know suggestions. Uh, how we can make these modules better, what other things we can include in these modules to make them uh, even better for the learners. Uh, and your observation and your comments will be recorded uh, for the purpose of improvement of this course. So please come forward and share your experiences and your comments with us. Over to you, participants. Yes, uh, you can now come forward. I invite uh, the learners to come forward and share your experiences, your queries, your doubts. If you have any queries or questions related to module one of this course, uh, I'll be happy to respond to your questions. Good evening, sir. Yes, good evening. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Ankita Shukla, assistant, working as assistant professor in a GNIT college, uh, Greater Noida. And uh, thank you so much for a very excellent session. And I'm very thankful to you and the MOOCs team. So uh, according to me that uh, communication, communication is an inseparable aspect of daily life and we cannot live without communicating with anyone. Right. So communication can take place in both ways, either in person communication or communication through various social media platforms. Right. However, effective communication is something that you need to know for various business purposes. As we communicate with uh, innumerable people daily, we do not know what is the percentage of communication and, uh, and how well it reaches the desired audience. Effective communication means where we know what we are trying to communicate and the audience is getting exactly what we are trying to say. So this communication is a very important aspect of both our professional and personal lives. It involves developing certain skills with the help of which we can exchange information with more clarity, understanding and empathy to know all about what is effective communication and how it can improve your career. Right. So, uh, if, if we talk about the definition that effective communication is the process of exchanging, transmitting ideas, information, thoughts, knowledge, data, opinion, or messages from the sender through a selected method or channel to the receiver with a purpose that can be understood with clarity. So the process of effective communication makes both the sender and receiver satisfaction. Yes. It is true. a cyclic process. It is a cyclic process that starts with the sender and also ends with the sender as the sender receives a response or feedback from the receiver. So uh, uh, the different forms of communication can be stated as follows, just like a verbal communication, nonverbal, written communication and visual communication. These forms of communication can take place in person, over the phone or, th or through various digital platforms while the effectiveness of your communication can vary and it, it affects your professional area in various ways. Uh, it's a, it's a very effective, effective in a, important in also in a business, just like uh, yes. it brings people together and helps build and maintain relationships. It encourages the development of building trust with each other. Sir, uh, uh, just like you told that, we don't use uh, I instead of, we use only we. But if we if we can uh, if I uh, do any task or any work individually, then we uh, then I also use we instead of I. No, there is no need. Actually, communication presupposes uh, at least another member. Uh, we generally communicate with somebody else, so it can be uh, 
uh, communicating with another person, another individual, or communicating in a team scenario. So when we are communicating with multiple others around us. So when we are communicating uh, and we uh, observe the we language, that connects. And several studies have also established that whenever we use we language, that connects promptly instead of using I language, because I will be too individualistic after a certain point. I don't uh, mean to say that we should never use I language. There are occasions okay. when we need to use I language, but that I language need not appear as a highly individual oriented language. That means I'm giving all importance to myself. Okay, so okay. when it comes to some actions, because communication leads to something, it can be an exchange of information. It can be a sharing of an idea. It can be uh, going for some action. So that is the transactional function of communication. Uh, for example, if I tell somebody, uh, can you uh, give me a glass of water? So I'm, I'm saying something. Okay. I'm requesting the person for something. And the person brings a glass of water to me. So the transactional function of communication is achieved. So our transaction is done. But then if I tell the person, give me a glass of water fast, come on, give me. That's, that person may feel insulted. Yes, sir. And the person say, go to hell. I'm not giving you a glass of water. The person yes. will have every right to say that. So we are saying the same thing with the same yes. objective, but we are saying it differently. In the first place, I am being respectful towards the listener. In the yes. second, I'm not at all respectful. I'm bossy. I'm commanding. Okay. It may happen that yes. that person is my subordinate and the person will carry out my orders because I'm the boss of that person. But well within, the person will be cursing me. And the person can never have trusted me. So I'll not be able to build trust with that person. So it is, it is all about how we reach out to the other person. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your input, uh, Dr. Ankita. Thank you, sir. Uh, Yes, uh, uh, there is one Lavanya on board. Uh, please go ahead. Uh, Lavanya, you had raised your hand. Or anybody else in the meantime, if somebody else wants to say something. Ask a question. So you can you can uh, uh, do that one by one. Uh, it was interesting uh, to observe during the entire course that uh, uh, we. Uh, had a lot of uh, participants. In fact, we already have a lot of participants from uh, the African uh, countries. Um, and then uh, they also participated quite actively, uh, apart from the Indian learners, uh, learners from the African continent uh, participated quite uh, uh, actively in all the sessions, forums, um, can I invite uh, our friends from Africa to come forward and share their experiences with us? Yes, if you want, uh, uh, please come forward. If you have any question related to module one. Yes, please go ahead. It's so free, please go ahead. Uh, Isufi, can you hear me? Isufi Mohammed? Uh, you uh, yes, can I go can ahead. hear you very well, sir. Good afternoon. Yes, yes. Hello. Okay. Hello. Okay, I've got a scenario. Let's imagine that I'm talking to my coworker, and in a certain time, 
he's not too willing any longer to talk to him, just crossing his hands. And then I'm trying to interrupt, but he's not too willing. So can I consider it as a communication? I mean, like he's trying to give me a message or I would just have to consider that. There's some problem, there's some problem in the network. Uh, can you come again and uh, ask the question, please? I'm talking to a coworker, and in a certain time, can talk to me. Can you hear me? Like there is yes, a background yes. noise. Please, please go ahead. And my colleague, like, is not willing to talk to me any longer. So maybe I bored. I have bothered him. So I'm asking, can I consider it from him? Like it's a kind of communication. It's like he's trying to send me a message. Like he's not willing to talk to me, or I can yes, just consider yes. it as he's not willing to talk to me. I mean, exactly. can I consider still that there is a kind of communication inside it, or any longer? Of course, and that's uh, uh, that's a very interesting question. Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, that will not be treated as uh, a piece of communication. That will be treated as a piece of broken communication. Why does this happen? Most often uh, we think that we are ready for communication so the other person is also ready for communication. That may not be the case because the other person may be in a very different mindset or psychological situation when we want to begin that communication. So any communication, as, a, as you all know, communication has multiple facets. It can be communication for information. That is the, the most basic form of communication because it doesn't go beyond that point or beyond a certain point. When we want our communication to go beyond the level of information, that means we enter the multiple possibilities like establishing connection uh, and then uh, you know, building trust and then uh, creating collaboration uh, and various other things. It will require a deeper understanding of the communication situation. Imagine a situation you are about to teach and you suddenly discover that your student is not interested in learning. If you fail to know that, understand that your student is not interested in learning at that particular point, and if you begin the teaching process, it will not lead to any result. There'll be no result at all because no communication can happen. So any uh, serious communication requires that we understand whether the other person is ready for communication or not. So that will require some empathetic approach or skills. We need to develop empathy in us so that we can understand the psychological state of the other person. So for example, before starting the serious piece of communication, I can always uh, try to know, try some starters. Uh, okay, how are you feeling? Uh, what's up? Um, so this, this way we can try to understand how the other person is feeling about that particular um, you know, piece of serious communication, whether the other person is ready or not. Once we are clear, once we are sure that the other person is ready for communication, then we can start communication. Those uh, situations, there will be a very less possibility that the other person will not respond. Otherwise, if we promptly start to communicate without uh, uh, you know, understanding the mental state of or the psychological state of that person, that might lead to failed communications. Could I, could I answer your uh, question? Okay, thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, we can now take uh, other queries and questions.
Yes, you can just raise your hand and ask your question. If you have any queries related to uh, this module, any questions related to this module, you can. Or if you want to share your comments, your suggestions, you're also most welcome. Do we also have uh, participants from any other? Yes, uh, uh, we have uh, a question from Sumani Salifu. Please go ahead. Uh, Sumani, please go ahead. Uh, if you can hear me, uh, Abhishek Pandey has raised his hand. Yes, Abhishek, please go ahead. Sir, are you listening to me? Yes, I can hear you, but there's some network hello, problem. Sir. Yes, hello. Hello, Abhishek. Sir, I have, I have a question from middle one that is, what yes, is yes. necessary for interview in communication? What, what interviewer see the candidate in Okay, I got your point. I got your point. That's a very interesting question. Uh, a question that every job seeker is struggling with what interviewers actually look for uh, in a prospective uh, uh, employee or a candidate. Of course, uh, interviewers uh, want to see whether the candidate is good at skills. One, your hard skills. That means uh, only communication will not help. You need to have some hard skill. For example, if I'm an engineer, I must have engineering skills. If I am a civil engineer, I must have civil engineering skills. If I am a computer science engineer, I must have computer science engineering skills. If I'm a typist, I must have type, typing skills. Uh, if I'm a speaker, yes, I must have speaking skills. Uh, is my voice audible to you? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Uh, so my hard skills are important. So your hard skills will be tested by your interviews. Hello. First. <laughs> Apart from that, uh, somebody's mic is unmuted. So can you please, can you please uh, mute yourself? Yes, thank you. So, and then we come to the soft skills. Soft skills include communication skills. I will not be working in alienation from others when I go to my workplace because a lot of work will take place through our conversations and interactions with others, the other uh, members of a team. When I say members of a team, I mean all the, the workers uh, within an organization. So when that is the thing, then we need certain communication skills, and certain soft skills. And these skills are also tested by the interviewers. They want to know whether this person can communicate well, whether the person can work as a team member, whether the person can show respect towards other team members, whether the person is a good listener, just imagine an, an yes, expert sir. during the interview asks you a question and you didn't listen properly. You, you uh, request the expert to repeat that question. If you do so, 
four to five times during the interview, it will give a bad impression to your selectors, the experts that this person doesn't okay, listen to us carefully. Okay. So these yes, are the sir. things that are generally uh, looked for by the experts during an interview. Okay. Thank you, Avishek. Yes, sir. Uh, K. Nagesh Babu has raised his hand. Please go ahead. Good evening, sir. Yes, good evening. Actually, my doubt is uh, what is the critical reasoning and normal reasoning relation, sir? Yes, yes. When we listen uh, normally, you know, as you said, normal listening, that is general listening. We generally listen for information. What the person said. Okay. When we come to critical listening, we try to analyze each and every word uttered by that person so that we can understand the meaning that lies in between the words or the meaning that lies beneath the words spoken by the speaker. So critical listening is very, very important. So for example, uh, about five minutes ago, five or 10 minutes ago, I briefly discussed module one, okay? I briefly okay. discussed module one. I, I said uh, that I, I have discussed these things in module one. Now, if you are listening to me critically, you'll be in a position to understand which things I talked about and yes, what is the function of those things. So I can understand that if I engage in critical listening. If I'm not engaging in critical listening, you can only uh, tell me that, okay, you, you talked about these things and uh, you did not uh, say anything about the other things. Okay, so that is, that is the thing. Uh, could I answer your question? Yes, sir. Yeah, no, sir. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, okay, sir. Sumani Salifu, you have uh, raised your hand. So you can ask your question now, please. Okay, now I'll take uh, questions from uh, the chat box uh, because we already have a few questions in the chat box. Uh, Come on. So I'll be taking uh, questions from the chat box. Uh, somebody's mic is uh, unmuted. So please mute yourself. Yeah. So there's a question by now, Sian Muhammad, the question is, uh, I'm a primary school teacher. How can I get 11, 12 year old students uh, develop critical listening? Uh, so of course, uh, uh, that's uh, an interesting question. Interesting because uh, it is not that easy to develop critical listening skills in 11 and 12 year old students, but it can be done. Critical listening needs to be given to, or this skill needs to be developed by our learners in a graded manner. Graded means we can give them some uh, basic critical listening skill activities. And thereafter, we can gradually raise the difficulty level, gradually. So for example, you can uh, tell them a story, you can um, you know, talk to, them about an incident, uh, something, and then try to understand their perspectives, whether they can critically analyze the thing or not. So through stories and through you know, brief descriptions, uh, you can give them some critical listening tasks and they will respond because by that time, our, our brain begins to uh, think critically, think independently, so they can, they can easily do that. That's not difficult.
So you can do so. Any other uh, question or queries? Uh, Somani Salufu, can you ask your question? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, of course. Finally, good. okay, good, good, good. Um, yes, after a lesson, uh, there are questions for us A to A to D. Um, the nature of your obje objectives. Sometimes the questions are true, and so you put in A at A all of above all of the yes. above. And so which is supposed to be D because the right answers, the three right answers are supposed to be above means ahead of. So I am drawing your attention to the, your, your questioning. And I noticed two questions um, yes. were, were, were wrong, uh, which I'm drawing your attention to. I wrote them next session, I will let you have it. Um, I'll mention the questions for you because the questions and the answers do not match. And so this is what I, I, I want to uh, draw your attention to. So that when the questions are rectified, I'll go back and answer them. So um, just uh, to, to notify you, I'm also a teacher and uh, my colleagues, I believe they've noticed that too. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Um, is this a question? I have this question from the chat box. Uh, what have been the biggest lessons you have learned about communication? So uh, I do not know the name of the person who has asked this question. If you can write your name in the chat box. What have been the biggest lesson you have learned about uh, communication? Hello? Yes, hello. Um, I think that the biggest lesson is about bringing us together. Um, bringing us to? So, together, yes. Uh, through communication, I know you. Yes. And uh, I, I, I know some of my colleagues who are learners. And so that is the biggest lesson, bringing us together. Oh, great, great. Yes, of course. You're right, uh, uh, Salifu, because uh, uh, when it comes to communication, the biggest lesson that we draw is the connections that we make. Communication must help us build connections with people. When we have connections, we can depend on those connections. We can build relationships, trust, respect, collaboration, teams on the basis of that connection. So, so that way uh, we can call it the biggest lesson we learn about communication. So most often people think uh, after a certain point, we need to say bye-bye to each other, but that's not the thing. Communication is a lifelong process. So also communication and connection. So communication leads to connection and connection leads to respectful communication. So they are complementary to each other. So that was a good response, uh, Salifu. Thank you for that. Any other, any other? Uh... 
Thank you, sir. Thank you for your valuable. Yes. Any other queries or questions? You can unmute yourself and speak. Okay, if you also want to write your responses in the chat box, your question, your queries, your suggestions, your comments, you can write in the chat box as well. And we are going to meet again the same time uh, to take up module two. So if you have any questions related to module two, uh, writing skills, you're most welcome to bring those questions to the forum so that we can take up your questions. And as I have already uh, told you all, uh, you're most welcome to bring your comments, your suggestions uh, to this live session. We'll have a live session every day uh, starting today uh, until this Saturday, 21st of January. Uh, so we'll be taking off for one module uh, every live session. So when we meet tomorrow, we'll be uh, taking up uh, module two. Uh, do you want to ask anything, uh, uh, Isufi Mahmoud? Uh, yes, sir, yes, sir. Yes, yes, please go ahead. Okay, please, I would like to get your advice. There is a question I used to come across during interview and that yes. question really bothers me. No, I have a question. If the interviewer asked ask me, what makes you the unique candidate to be selected? I feel like other candidates are, are, all, are, I mean, are also valuable. So I have trouble to answer this question. If you can help me, thanks. Exactly, because uh, uh, that's one, uh, now, uh, important question, uh, which uh, we generally come across during interviews. They would like to know what is so unique about us, uh, which makes us uh, different from others, which helps us stand out from the crowd. Uh, of course, we, we all are unique in some way or the other, because we all have at least one special quality which others do not have. Uh, somebody's mic is unmuted. Um, unmuted. Please uh, mute that. So uh, when it comes to uh, you know talking about our uniqueness, how can we do that? You might have taken a look at the other modules um, in which I have talked about self-discovery, self-analysis, self-understanding. It's a very important activity that we all need to uh, perform or carry out. Most often we uh, ignore ourselves. For example, if I ask myself, uh, what are my skills? What are my hobbies? Uh, what are my interests? Uh, what are my skills or what are my uh, specialties? And if I can round, write down, uh, these uh, aspects related to me, I'm in a better position to understand who I am. So if you can recall, uh, once uh, Plato, the great Greek philosopher, asked his tutor, Socrates, sir, what is the best way to understand the world or people around you? Socrates smilingly replied, know then thyself. So know yourself, that is the best way to understand people around you. But most often we tend to ignore this. If I can know myself, my values, my beliefs, the way I com communicate, my communication style, there is something called communication style. So which uh, you all can uh, you know, uh, discover, I'm writing uh, about it uh, in, the, in the chat box. Uh, so, so that you all can take a look at it. So 
you can discover your communication style. What is that communication style? Is it a people style, process style, or what is that style? I'm writing about it in the chat box. You can note it down and then you can explore this particular thing to discover your communication style. So um, it is, uh, So you can uh, take a look at this particular document uh, produced by P. Case. Uh, just uh, go to Google search box and type communication style P. Case. It will take you to that document. And on the basis of that, you can discover your communication style. So most often in my classrooms, when I interact with engineering students, and whenever I want to know their skills, they are in doubts because they do not know a lot of things about it. So discovering oneself is going to help a lot. And that will help you understand what is unique about you. And you can easily communicate. This is my uniqueness, or this is unique about me. Something that uh, makes me special. Okay, so uh, could I answer your question, Sophie? Yes, thank you very much, sir. Thanks. Yes, yes. And uh, Kushi Singh raised her hand. Uh, yes, uh, good evening, sir. Yes, good evening. Please go ahead. Sir, actually, I was. I would like to answer the question that was asked by Sophie that what makes you of valuable course, to join? Of course, please, please, most welcome. Please go ahead. Thank you, Kata. Okay, okay. Uh, for example, if you are like uh, giving any interview and this question is asked to you, so prior to this question, like when you are going for the interview, you should research about the company like it has been in any of the recent news or something and you should also know about the mission statement of that company so that while answering you can uh, add one major point that is this is the mission statement of your company and i can resonate with it and i can work on it better so that uh, I, I would like to join your company or i can do better for you i can do better than others like this way you can add something valuable to it yes very true very rightly said very rightly said because you need to, uh, you know, there are two things that we all can do. The first is to know oneself very, very well. Um, my listening style, my speaking style, my writing style, my reading style, uh, my vocabulary style, what kind of words do I use? Because words make uh, persons. So what kind of words do I use? What kind of tone do I use? And uh, what is my idea of uh, empathy? What is my idea of leadership? What is... So when we begin to know ourselves well, then we are in a much better position. And that's when we come across uh, something else. We can always find a match. We can always identify something. And uh, we can always think of resonating with that particular thing. Very rightly said by you, because uh, when you know yourself and then you come across something and you can always uh, you know, establish a bridge with that particular thing, you'll find yourself uh, in a better position to go for that. Yes, rightly said. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, madam. Well, uh, uh, I think it's time now. If you have no further questions or queries, we can uh, call it uh, a day now. Um, and uh, we can put an end to this session. Um, do you have any further questions or we can call it? Uh, yeah, no, uh, okay. yeah, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. So, thank you so much. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir.
for being a part of this course and uh, for sharing your ideas. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We'll meet sir. again tomorrow the same time to discuss module two. Thank you, sir. Bye, sir. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good Have day, a nice sir. Time. Yeah. Bye bye.